John Hattie is most well known for this massive research study he did where he looked at the factors that have the highest impact on student learning. In the 2015 version of his study, he found the number one influence on student achievement to be the teacher's belief in whether or not a student could achieve. Chaim Gannat has influenced me since I first read what he had to say about the relationship between teachers and their students. I know this quote by heart. I have come to a frightening conclusion. I am the decisive element in the classroom. It is my personal approach that creates the climate. It is my daily mood that makes the weather. The late Dr. Rita Pearson is well known for her TED Talk, Every Kid Needs a Champion, where she talks about the human connection in teaching and the absolute need for us to believe in our students in order for them to succeed. So Chaim Gannut claimed that the teacher is the decisive element in the classroom. Rita Pearson calls for a collective belief in our students. And John Hattie's studies conclude that the number one impact on student learning is what the teacher believes about their students' ability to achieve. So what happens when we put all of this together? What does this actually look like? Because it's not enough just to tell our students we believe in them. We need to be credible in our beliefs. And the only way we can do that is by creating conditions that embody this belief by walking the talk, by just doing it. Now, there are certain things over which we do not have much control, such as the programs we teach, provincial or school board policy, and of course, the home lives of our students. But there is actually a lot over which we do have control, and I don't think it's as frightening a conclusion as Chaim Gannat came to. In fact, I think it's really liberating. We have absolute control over how we choose to teach. We have control over the policies we choose for our classrooms, as well as the environments in which we teach. When it comes down to it, we have control over who and how we choose to be with our students. But again, what does this look like? We can choose to make what might seem to be abstract concepts to our students very concrete by the manner in which we teach them. Mariev teaches about straight lines through bungee jumping Barbies. You'll notice that part of the learning took place outside of the classroom wall so that her students could move while they learn. Lindsay decided that she wanted to be able to work with small groups of learners at a time, so she began to organize her class using a station rotation model that allows everyone to continue learning in a variety of ways while she connects with each of her students through small group conversations. Julie and Michelle put together an online resource space that their students can reference both in and outside of the classroom, and they came to the realization that it wasn't enough to just create that space. They had to model how to use it in order to support their students towards autonomy. Matthew developed a class website so that his students could have access to his daily agendas, as well as assignments and other resources. This way, if anybody misses a class, they can still be a part of that classroom community. And for those who would like to review it after the class had happened, the website is always available to them. Daniel records his lessons and shares them with his students. He allows students to access recordings from previous years, so that if they want to go ahead, they can. He also then gives students the choice to write exams when they are ready for them without having to wait for a particular exam date, thus giving students control over the pace of their learning. At Forest Hill Elementary School, the learning is not only confined to the classroom. Traditionally, when we see students in the hallway, we might think they're in trouble. But at this school, students are allowed to choose where they want to work, and some choose the hallway. This concept of student responsibility and growing autonomy is extended to classroom and school policy. Students sign out computers and notify their teachers about bathroom or movement breaks on their own. They also transition from class to class unsupervised, with visuals to help them along the way. Kathleen has designed her classroom at the First Nations Regional Adult Centre in a way that is very flexible. The desks can be easily moved into different configurations, and she has designed the room to make brain breaks a part of the learning process. You'll notice the stationary bicycle set up near her window. Recognizing that movement is needed during the day is becoming more and more popular. At Clearpoint Elementary School, they recently installed bikes of their own in the hallways and classrooms, so that students could take that movement break they so need in order to help them along the learning path. And again, learning happens both in and outside of the classroom. All of these are ways that teachers and schools are walking the talk and showing through their actions that they believe all of their students can achieve both in and outside of the classroom walls.